looking at said replay and on the stroke of 46 minutes bam let's get in in the bottom left hand side playing as team protoss he's red he's from Aya, and he's coming to move your base into space it's gherkin in the top right hand side it's our hero zerg for the day its name is herman purring's flanart and i need to adjust my camera i feel like it needs to be smaller bigger or just gone i reckon not better. I don't know. I think I'm going to get rid of it. Let's get rid of it now. The camera's outside. But we're going to see what looks like a forge opening with a weird little expand, weird little positioning on this. Uh, it's, it's got a bit of a weird positioning because you would expect it to be on one end or the other, but apparently this is something going for a cheap entry. And Flarnot sees, but does Flarnot see? Does Flo not see what is happening? Flo not does see the worker. So this worker should not be a surprise. The thing is, Flo not did see this worker come up. Flo not did see this worker. Oh my giddy aunt. So at this point, if you haven't seen the worker, you put this overlord here and you leave it here. Because that way, pretty much everywhere in your natural is covered from cannon rushes. Oh no, the drone has found it. Uh, no, sadly, Gherkan not the same as Cucumber. Um, but. Oh, a little bit of poke, prod, poke. Thing is, Flarnot's not trying to expand yet. And this is annoying because it basically forces a Zerg into an all in. Unless they cancel it, in which case you can expand, but it's still fucking annoying. Or, or you could do this. The thing is, if you do this. You have to send another drone after this probe. Oh, the cannon rush is real! The cannon rush has just become real. And this, by the way, is the correct response. You pull enough stuff to kill off the cannons. Or put, kill off the pylon. Pylon first. Pylon first! Kill off the pylon! That said, if the cannons don't go up... Attack the pylon as well! Attack the pylon as well! Attack the pylon as well! Attack the pylon! Thank you! Why? Get away, get away! Run! 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 Also, actually no. Let's back up a second. The first thing you do in a cannon rush is you kill this little shit here. You kill the worker, you don't kill the attack itself! You just stop it happening. Because once it gets this entrenched, you cannot stop it. Kill the worker! Oh, oh my god, this is actually working, this defense. Oh my goodness me. He's going to take damage, but actually this cannon rush might have stopped. No! No! You don't attack cannons with workers ever! If they're firing, you cannot beat that. Oh! You need a little more than that. And basically the thing is, that you kill off the worker, the pylons cannot go down, the cannons cannot go down. Oh, apparently Gherkin means cucumber in Swedish. Oh, right, my apologies. In, in English it's spelled G-H-E-R-K-I-N. These things are not going to do enough, I don't think. Oh wait, maybe not. Oh, if only they weren't attacking so inefficiently! And the cannon rush is dead. The thing is, at this stage, you need to find out where the probe is, if there's another probe around, because there's another cannon rush possibility. Is That said, this base can see, so it's all good. The thing is, our Protoss players actually lost quite a lot of resources now. And I'm not convinced that this was worth it. Oh my god. Secondary cannon rush. Secondary cannon rush? Are you mad? Well, that's quite possibly our, our, our Protoss player is mad. The thing is, Gherkin's gonna be not supply block at all. Go forth! Go forth! Go forward! Go forward! Scout! 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 Kill off the kill off the worker! Kill the worker! Kill the worker! Kill the worker! Kill the worker! Thank you! You kill the worker. Why do we kill the worker? We kill the worker because if you kill the worker, they can't build any more cannons. Kill the worker! Kill the worker! It's right there! 
I'm losing my fucking mind over this. No! Flanot! No! No, Flanot! Don't throw workers into cannons like that! Make lings first! And kill the worker! Kill the animals! Go all AGDQ on this shit! This cannot be cost effective! Oh my god! Either kill the workers or kill the pylons and don't or kill the cannons, but focus on one of them. Ah <laughs> It hurts! Kill the worker! If you kill the worker, the cannon rush stops! Also kill the cannons if you're gonna. Like, seriously kill the cannons before they kill your queens. Oh! Nice! Nice transfuse! I like, I like a lot. That was really nice. But you kill the worker. Hey, Harbinger. You kill the worker. You kill the fucking worker dead. And then they can't do cannon rushing until they send another worker up. It's just like, ah. That said, Flannel's got actually a decent number of everything except workers up at this point. And our opponent is only now making his Cybercore because he invested so many faking minerals into this this attack that didn't actually do any any serious dam damage long term. But Flarnot really wants a third base up right now. And a shit ton of workers. I mean, this is the point where you drone so hard because if you don't, they're going to outmine you. Um, but it's up to Flarnot. Gherkin, by the way, is supply blocked pretty hard. And this is what we want to see. Six drones, bam! Instant making more. Make more, make more, make more. Scatter around for cannons, yes, but make sure you make more drones, because at this stage you can. Your opponent hasn't got anything to attack you with, and you know it. Like, oh, wait. That was an accident. I meant to press V. Yeah, Flarnot has vision, Flarnot can see the wall, and has actually seen pretty much everything there is apart from the Cybercore, and this robotics facility going up. But if this is turning into a mortal century, then eight minutes Cybercore is glad standard. Yes, yes it is. Getting that warp gate up. By the way, if you notice there are people here who would be interested in watching their replays being cast but aren't here, let them know that they can come and play. Um, and we are seeing another nine drones coming out, which again is good because Flarnot's not under any pressure. So once you get up to three by saturation, you can then worry about units. The thing is, Flarnot's actually being very good at this point and checking for thirds. Um, this, by the way, this this other third here is automatically being checked by the fact there's a Ling on the watchtower. That's really nice. Um, and one Ling is going to scout ahead and see nothing. Nothing new, anyway. Stalker coming out. And actually going to be going for some kind of anti... I, you know what? I don't know. I actually don't know what this thing is for. The, the, the problem with it, Chazway, is that at this stage our Protoss player has fucked themselves up somewhat. Um, because because they don't have anything, and they're way, way behind in terms of in terms of army, in terms of bases. I think if Flamos had basically canned that, that, so that thing a little harder... Oh, if, if he'd basically been able to step on that worker a little harder, then he might have been in a better, a better position. But he's still doing okay. I mean, in terms of numbers of workers, he's building his worker count up rather steadily, getting himself up double evos for upgrades, Getting a third base up, which is a little later than it would otherwise have been, but again, if you're taking that kind of pressure, you expect to be a little delayed. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is not terrible for Flarmont. Flarmont's actually in a reasonable position, because our Protoss player literally cannot pressure at all. Our Protoss player has ten armies, has, has, has uh, two units. And there's two Immortals on the way, so this is turning into some kind of Immortal base play. But if you can get units out to harass that, like, from the moment they leave the base, they have to put, um... True, Flarnot can't attack into this, but the Flarnot doesn't need to attack into this. Flarnot needs to macro. Flarnot needs to make units afterwards. Worry about what units when you've caught, when you've got, yeah, 80 workers, whatever. Oh, Poison TV has just hosted me for 23 viewers. Oh, mwah, love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is looking increasingly like an all-in. Oh, oh, oh. Sadly, this is not a return magnet, Kyle. And Flarnot is a play block kadoo. Thank you, Snafu. You are a true fan. In any case, thank you to all viewers from Poison TV who decided to come and join us. Willkommen at Bienvenue. Welcome. Es freut mich, euch zu sehen. However, I've... At this stage, what I'm kind of hoping is that Flanus will end up getting a fourth base up. Hey, Big Zebra. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. 
Uh, the way you host Harbinger is you, you type slash host and then my channel name into your channel. So. Uh, the Immortal Century is real. The question now is, will the Hydras be up in time? I'm guessing it's going to be Hydras because, you know, Hydra movement speed, good unit. But... And also, Flarnot is now very, very aware of the attack that's about to come in. This, however, is going to be a bit of a problem, because Flarnot doesn't have much in terms of units. I mean, just saying. There's five Hydras out. Hydras are good. Hydras are not... Uh, Twelve Zealots, five Immortals, seven Sentries good. So we're going to need to see some serious unit pumpage out of... Oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, this is another way to do this, I guess. Pumping a ton of units and some spine crawlers at the same time. I like the idea of sending these units out here just to sort of... Oh, wow, he's actually abandoning the third completely preemptively. Just getting way the hell out of there and making a baneling nest. This, by the way, I think is gold league play. So, uh... <laughs> oh, big zebra in the channel teaching us the mysteries of the hokey cokey. <laughs> and that's why you don't mess with the big zebra. His hokey cokey foo is amazing. But, this the... Actually, force field's not so fabulous. Attempts to make Guardian Shield work. Possible. Guardian Shield actually doing pretty well because against Hydra DPS it does make a bit of a difference. The problem is the shields, the force fields are actually just getting in the way of the Protoss army now. Um, because all there's like, the whole point of force fields is they cut your opponent's army in half. If they don't cut your opponent's army in half, then you end up walking into a wall. Um, and then you end up losing quite a lot of stuff. But again, it looks like a lot of units here. The Hydras and Queens trying to do their best, but actually turns into Spines versus Immortals, which goes badly for the Spines and not so badly for the Immortals. That said, Protoss pulling out when they really didn't have to. Oh my goodness. And that might be a dead Immortal there. The Hydras should be able to keep up. Problem is, there's a shit ton of army over here. Oh, pull back! No! Don't feed Hydras to your enemy! No! No! Okay, so what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a Mahoos of Army Supply on the outside, and not a Mahoos of Army Supply on the inside. This Baneling might actually... These Banelings might actually save the day. If somehow they do it. I don't... Uh, I don't know, Kev. I don't know. As a lot of people would say. Oh, thanks for Sunsval's finest for hosting me. Makes me feel all loved. But yeah. Third base goes down in a matter of seconds, which is not entirely a surprise. And the Broodlings actually doing damage. Well played, Broodlings. Do like. Do like, do like. Um, the question is, can the Lynx get in past these Force Fields? The Force Fields haven't been spectacular so far, so they might actually do quite a lot of damage. The Lynx tanking quite a lot of pain from the Zealots there, but unfortunately because the Zealots have plus one, I believe, they're not actually doing as much damage as they might. And the Force Fields keeping them out. Ooh, nasty. The thing is now, it's there's a lot of Lynx, but they're not quite going to be enough, I don't think. I have a feeling this might be a win for Protoss, as Gurkhan getting the army supply lead of, well, let's say 50, and getting into the pro into the Zerg Natural, and that's Flarnot. Defeated. It's a sad day for Flarnots everywhere. And as we get up to about, let's say, 59.30, we'll transition back.